there yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from Vancouver, Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Thursday, July 16th, 2020 and this is video number 64. So this is my second video of the day, hence me wearing the same shirt. And I'm going to be pre-recording this and uploading and posting it later down the way. So uh, yeah, I am jumping in here real quick to talk about some whips and FOs. And for people who are just new, welcome. Hi, I'm Gary and I'm the host of Urban Yarn. And if you've not heard of whips or FOs, which I hadn't done as well when I first started watching YouTube and wondered what the acronyms were, FOs is Finnish Objects and Whips are Works in Progress. So yeah, if you're uh, coming back, welcome back. I love reading all your comments and uh, thank you for leaving them. I will jump straight into the finished objects. So in the last podcast, I had uh, showcased a little bit of this as a technique or uh, I guess a little bit of a crochet stitch mesh up that I had from two of my favorite patterns and they were the Just Feel Festive Shawl by Kalisha Ryan and the Dragon Valley Shawl by I believe her name is Johanna Lindell. Johanna Lindell. I will correct it in my uh, show notes description box down below. So if you are looking for any uh, of what I'm making reference to, that will be down below in the description box. So those are both free patterns here online on Ravelry.com. And they are using scrap yarn from all of my projects in the last six months. So here we go. I think I got to somewhere here where I showcased it last time. So halfway through and then I completed up with the rest of this little, t I would say it was like a little bit of a, a lesson for me uh, to do the mathematics and the, and the stitch counts so that it continued to be in the same uh, stitch count all the way through. And I really enjoyed it. It was so much fun. So the length of this is about five feet long, so a meter and a half. I had more um, scrap yarn to go through, uh, some of which were heavier weight yarn that I didn't want to add to the scarf because it would have, uh, I guess, affected the quality of the fabric. But also I had some uh, appropriate yarn to use, but I didn't want to go any longer because I tried it on and it was the right length that I liked. So five and a half uh, feet for me was perfect. So I used yarn, I'll just put it on, I used yarn from uh, my lightweight uh, scrap and that included sock, that, that included a two weight yarn, uh, like a sport weight and also some very, very unfuzzy, I would, I would call it the unfuzzy threes. So I find that uh, sometimes the fuzz on the, the, the three weights actually make it when you crochet a little bit more of a four weight uh, but I use the unfuzzy threes so what do you think I should actually put this camera just a little lower so we can see what it looks like there we go da -da -da. and yeah it worked out really really squishy and relaxed I used a I believe it was a 4.5 or a 4 millimeter crochet hook and uh, it it offered up a really stretchy lovely fabric so yeah because I am uh, doing a mashup of two of my favorite patterns uh, I decided to call this particular I guess technique or draft of of this uh, style uh, the festive dragon so what do you think of the festive dragon it has the festive colors of all those pops of different projects that I've worked on in the past uh, it also uh, you know it feels great around uh, my neck so there's nothing itchy about it yeah enjoyed it enjoyed it very much and because it's really warm I'm gonna take it off I just want to show you a detail on the little learn that I made and the learn for me was reversing the ridges uh, so the ridges are appearing on both sides of the fabric so if it does twist around 
and you get to see the other side you do get the ridging on both sides as well so that's a nice feature the other thing that I really really loved was when I folded it I folded it so that it was half in on itself and I really liked look at that if that was a scarf as well in a chevron I think that might be my next little learn for myself to make a chevron uh, using the festive dragon technique that would be brilliant so I have a lot more of the lightweight yarns that I can bust through and try that one out in the next uh, little bit so love 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 that a lot now the second finished object is another crocheted item so the first one was crochet and this is also crochet and I did it, followed a pattern, a free pattern, which I will uh, showcase in a bit. But I loved the way that stitch work worked out, how the ridge work kind of meanders like waves uh, going down and around. So it's a seamless worked in the round cowl. And the yarn that I used was a uh, worsted weight so it's quite a heavy garment and I used about uh, I want to say 230 grams of, uh, of yarn which is just over uh, let me think eight eight fours 24 like 260 meters maybe of, of yard of, of uh, yarn so yeah, I'll try it on for you. And I was like playing around with it in front of the mirror thinking, how do you wear these things? So I know on the pattern there is uh, just poking your head through and leaving the two sides dangle down was one of the ways that was worn on the pattern. And that's kind of nice because you can show off the, the pattern itself. Then there was also a photograph of the designer wearing it uh, folded over so twice and I believe she was using the twist in the front but what I liked was the twist in the back and using the two loops uninterrupted with the twist for the front and yeah it's a really nice uh, drapey feel and it also sits down well on my body so there is enough weight there that it's not going to fly off or you know be swept up in a in a wind uh, so that's going to stick there and and sit really well and the nice thing about cows as opposed to scarves is that you're not having to always readjust or if it starts to unravel off your body you're not having to always you know maneuver and twist and figure out ways of tying it down on the cowl in itself as as it generally is will stay on your body regardless because there's no end so it's it's gonna sit there and and no matter how much you move unless you hang upside down it's not gonna come off so I'll take that off because it's uh, quite warm and I'll talk to you about the yarn and the pattern so here's the yarn here it's from Ice Yarns and it was in their discontinued, uh, I guess in their discontinued section. So I got it for a steal. And uh, so I guess any worsted weight yarn would work. But this one in particular were four strands of uh, fibers spun together uh, loosely. So there was a little bit of uh, splitting of the yarn. Uh, but what do we have here? It was, it's called sail plain and it's 50 gram ball 100% acrylic colorways gold camel beige gray and 100% acrylic as I said so you can uh, machine wash this and uh, triangle with an X with it I don't know what that is but um, yeah really really nice yarn I have a little over three skeins I have three full skeins and this one left uh, so I can make something else out of it but like that a lot so now on to the pattern I'm going to show you case the pattern 
So here it is. It's called Merlin Cow, and that is a free pattern by Kim Davidson. Her first page here that she mentions like a little bit about a blurb and what you need for the for the pattern, like the tools and the yard, uh, the yarn and notes, and then the pattern itself. It's quite a, an easy pattern, I would say. Uh, one that you could be having a conversation to look up at your, you know, your wonderful friend or your partner or your family uh, so that you, you can feel that, they, that you aren't ignoring them and you can also watch uh, a program occasionally looking up once you get to the part where there are multiples to repeat. Uh, so that's really, really nice. The next thing that I want to talk about is my work in progress. So my work in progress is something I've been building on for a little bit. Uh, over the course of the last, I would say, three nights, I've been concentrating mostly on this project. But uh, the previous, uh, I guess, th uh, two or three nights prior to uh, Monday, I was concentrating on getting the, to, the shawl and the cowl done. So this week has been a lot, a lot of crafting throughout the course of each day. Which I love. I love it. Uh, so this one comes from a book here called the Noro Pattern Book or Noro Knits I should say and it's called Jane Alson. So I don't know whether she is the designer or she's the publisher's name but I was gifted this from a YouTuber out there. Her name's Kim from the Affordably Crafty. Uh, hi Kim, how you doing? And uh, in this book are, I would say, up to 12 knit patterns from sweaters, cardigans, hats, socks, scarves, in all Noro yarn. So I loved, I'll just showcase the one that I'm thinking, of, well, I'm starting to make. And it's this one here. It's a pullover with a collar and a, a slight v-neck here. And it's oversized, so there is positive ease throughout the whole garment. And what I did was I fudged my um, needle size and my uh, yarn choice, I guess, so that I'm working towards getting less of ease. And so it's suggesting that there's uh, five inches of positive ease are all the way around the trunk of your, I guess, garment. But I want to reduce that because I think five inches is quite a lot. So there'll be a lot of puckering where the seams are joining or where, the, where you fold your body like under the arms. Or if you're um, bending down like that, you might have a bit of a like puckering of the fabric. So I'm like this model here is standing upright. But if he was to uh, be sitting down, I find that there's a lot more folding in a garment that's oversized and I don't want that to happen. So I'm trying to figure out a way to make it more of a three inch positive ease and not so much a five inch all the way around. Uh, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. And what I did was, I don't have Noro yarn, but I went through my stash and I found yarns that were actually like Noro yarn. So I'm just gonna get it up here because I have something to grab. Okay. And I did some swatching. So what I uh, pulled out was a swatch that was already done. Uh, I had gotten Cascades, uh, what is it called, Tangier yarn. And I had made this swatch up when I first got the yarn about maybe 10 months ago. So this swatch has been sitting there. I did some color work, so I won't showcase that. But this is the... This is the uh, Tangier yarn from Cascade. Absolutely love it. It's very, very light and airy. So I think it would be a great candidate for that pullover. And then I did uh, some other yarn as well with the Cascade. So this one here, this kind of oatmeal-y tan color is from Loops and Threads Cotton Silk. And it looks like that. So it's variegated as well and I like this as well a lot but I find I find that I need to have enough yarn to basically make the whole garment and so I did all of my because I've got 
Mm, I've got enough multiples of the Tangier yarn in different colorways to make a full sweater, but not a, the one same colorway. So I blended what I had in my stash and I really enjoyed the workup. So these are the combination of the three together. Now it's not, obviously not gonna be representing the whole of the garment in, will look like this because they are, all three are variegated. And I'll show you the three that I've got. <clears throat> so they are all connected in some way with slight colors that kind of bleed in and out of each of the skeins. So there's a bit of blue in this one here and a bit of the green, uh, the gray. Uh, there's the only thing that's unique, I would say, is the brown. The browns to beige are unique to just this one colorway. All the rest are kind of like within within here. So I'm I'm loving how this little section worked up. Obviously, I'm going back and forth in a smaller area, so the I guess the um, the gradation of the colors are in larger bands, whereas in the, the sample that I'm gonna show you of the start of the make, uh, the length of it is a lot longer going around and around, so the banding of the colors becomes more and more narrower. I know that there is a program out there that allows you to punch in the length of colors into a program and it shows you how uh, it works up on the amount of the width that the yarn has to go back and forth in. And, but I, I am liking this surprise so I don't want to be too planned that way. And here it is. So it's full of like these little, uh, safety pins right now giving me some markers but I'm doing the ridge work down below and it's quite a bunched up fabric right now but this will give me hopefully the three inch of positive ease all the way around yeah and look at that color that is amazing how it's all just sort of blending and then in some instances it is more pronounced as a definite line and I'm loving how it's surprising me every round that I make. And right now I'm just using these two. I'm going through these two colorways first and I've got a couple of skeins of each of these. And then I will introduce to the top part of the, uh, I guess the yoke, this will be introduced into the, into the, the color spectrum of things. So yeah. Now I wanna talk about a little bit of purchasing. And I'm not affiliated with any of the brands of yarn that I'm talking about today, so there's no kickback. Uh, these are all my honest opinions, and later down the way I'm gonna be, right now I'm gonna be talking about where to buy them, so I'm not affiliated with any of those online stores or any of the patterns that I'm presenting. These are only for your ease of access that I'm going to be linking all the links down below, so there's no affiliation of kickback with wh whether you click on the links or not. So, uh, yeah, so I purchased the Tangier 10 months ago, as I mentioned, and uh, I got it from lovecrafts.com. When I first purchased this, I have my invoice here in front of me saying that each of these skeins were discounted, but the discount was, I think, I want to say 30%. And these are in Canadian dollars that I'm mentioning right now because my Lovecraft account is set in Canadian dollars to get all of the Canadian currency. Uh, $7.73 was uh, what I got per skein. And now when I go on to lovecrafts.com, so what, what would that be with the discount, 30% discount? Maybe $10, $12, I don't know, somewhere around that vicinity in Canadian currency. When I go now and see what the price is of this cake, unless it's, I didn't misread it and it's a bigger skein, it's now 20 Canadian dollars. So I'm not sure what Lovecraft does with their markups or if they mark up their uh, items uh, because they are lacking in revenue in some other area and then when things go well that they kind of like uh, do a markdown I'm not sure 
but uh, that interests me uh, terribly to know that a company would do such a variance in price range from 10 months ago to today. So I do like Lovecrafts, I do uh, go visit them occasionally and I do notice that other skeins of yarn have been doing that uh, on their site that they're one price one month and then six months later they're a different price for their base price, not for the sale price but for the base price. And uh, so that that kind of like is a little bit disconcerting as a consumer to uh, feel that, I don't know, that there's no consistency, I guess. But you can find this on webs, and that's a different uh, website altogether that sells yarn. And they're selling, in particular, this color, which is number 27, I believe it's 27? Yeah, number 27 called Gray. And they're selling their skeins for, uh, what is it? nine dollars American and it may be in their special discountable yarns as well so once you get that in the cart and you're uh, clocking up you know two skeins or whatever it might be at nine dollars for a skein but then if you put three or four the price comes down if it's one of their discountable yarns I'm not too sure but at nine dollars it's way better than twenty dollars uh, Canadian I know one's the US webs sells in US currency so that would be the nine dollars and the Lovecrafts is twenty dollars in Canadian so that is just a helpful suggestion when you're purchasing yarn to be aware of shopping around does help uh, find, helps you kind of like uh, see what's out there and which site will be better to purchase from and I've noticed that sometimes it, um, yarns are better to buy from Lovecrafts than other sites as well. So it's all give and take. Uh, yeah, so I've showed you the, the wonderful start of my pullover. I love it so much. And I love that pattern book. Thank you, Kim. Love it, love it, love it. And the next thing that I wanted to talk about quickly, while I now see that we're already at 22 minutes, is how do people uh, organize their patterns? So I have patterns online at different companies like uh, Lovecraft. I have my own pattern collection there. I have it on Yarnspiration. I have some on Ravelry. Uh, but what I generally do is I print them out when I'm working on them and I stick them in this wallet here. And the wallet's full of dividers. And the the reason I do that is because I'm not sure from one day to the next if the account's going to uh, close down. Uh, so all those patterns that I, I secured into my account might not be retrievable anymore. Or for instance, you know, I don't know, something happens and I want to get at it when I'm remote and I don't have any internet connection. So I print them out and I stick them in a category of item. So knit, crochet, all go together in the same um, in the same pocket, but I separate them from garment type or uh, accessory type. So mittens will be all in the mittens, scarves will all, all be in scarves, and so, so on and so forth. Like if it's a, a sweater or a cardigan, that goes into one pocket. So that's how I organize it. And the other thing I do is I have a bit of a wish list in here, a pocket of wish list of things to do as well. And what I see in here when I pull it out and I long to be uh, a very, very efficient knitter is to do brioche. So Pom Pom is a magazine that I was drawn to from this cover design of this shawl. And I absolutely fell in love with the texture and it's, it uses brioche and that is one of my wishes for this year or next year uh, goal to to learn how to do brioche and uh, that opens up a whole new world of things for me uh, in the way of uh, doing maybe a Stephen West uh, make or a or that particular pom-pom designer that uh, scarf shawl thing that or dough that's been used uh, with the brioche 
And I did do a little bit of an attempt uh, this week to do brioche and it failed. <laughs> it failed. I was too distracted. I had the, a movie going. I was trying to follow a tutorial. I didn't have the right yarn because uh, when there was a reference or instruction to use yarn A, which happened to be blue, my yarn was, uh, a yarn B was blue for me. So I was getting confused and I just need to sit down and have dedicated time to focus on brioche. But that's about it. I'd love to hear your comments and know how you organize your patterns and where you find your patterns might be a good idea to share as well in the comments below. Uh, yeah, I have a few suggestions that I have in my description box. So if you're short on inspiration and need to find some patterns, I'm going to add a few down below. And if you made it this far, thanks for sticking around. And I want to just say, please uh, hit that like button, which is the thumb symbol uh, down below if you enjoyed it and think about subscribing. I'd love to see you in future videos and hear your comments. Uh, so stay safe. I hope you're doing well. Enjoy your week and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.